I want to show you a few optimization algorithms that are faster than gradient descent. In order to understand those algorithms, you need to be able to use something called exponentially weighted averages, um, also called exponentially weighted moving averages in statistics. Let's first talk about that, and then we'll use this to build up to more sophisticated optimization algorithms. So even though I now live in the United States, I was born in London. Um, so for this example, I got the daily temperature from London from last year. So on January 1st, temperature was 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And I know most of the world uses a Celsius system, but I guess I live in the United States, which uses Fahrenheit. Um, so that's 4 degrees Celsius. And on uh, January 2nd, it was 9 degrees Celsius and so on. And then about halfway through the year, a year has 365 days. So this would be sometime, day number 180 would be sometime in late May, I guess. It was 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, which is 15 degrees Celsius, and so on. So it starts to get you know, warmer towards summer, and it was colder in January. So if you plot the data, you end up with this. With day one being sometime in January, that you know, being the beginning of summer, and that's the end of the year, kind of late December. So this would be January. Uh, January 1st is the middle of the year, approaching summer, and this would be the data from the end of the year. So this data looks a little bit noisy, and if you want to compute the trends, kind of the local average or moving average of the temperature, here's what you can do. Let's initialize v0 equals 0, and then on every day, we're going to average it with a weight of 0 0.9 times whatever was the previous value plus 0 0.1 times the, that day's temperature. So theta 1 here would be the temperature from this first day. And on the second day, we're again going to take a weighted average, so 0 0.9 times the previous value plus 0 0.1 times today's temperature, and so on. V2 plus 0 0.1 times theta 3, and so on. And the more general formula is V on a given day is 0 0.9 times V from the previous day plus 0 0.1 times the temperature of that day. So if you compute this and plot it in red, this is what you get. You get a moving average, or what's called an exponentially weighted average, of the daily temperature. So let's look at the equation we had from the previous slide. It was Vt equals, um, previously we had 0 0.9, we're going to turn that into parameter beta, beta times Vt minus 1, plus, and then previously we had 0 0.1, but I'm going to turn that into 1 minus beta times theta t. So previously we had beta equals 0 0.9. It turns out that, um, for reasons we'll go into later, when you compute this, you can think of Vt as approximately averaging over something like 1 over 1 minus beta day's temperature. So, for example, when beta equals 0 0.9, you could think of this as averaging over the last 10 days' temperature. And that was the red line. Now, let's try something else. Let's set beta to be very close to 1. Let's say it's 0 0.98. Then, um, if you look at 1 over 1 minus 0 0.98, this is equal to 50. So this is, you know, think of this as averaging over roughly the last 50 days temperature. And if you plot that, you get this green line. So notice a couple things. With this very high value of beta, the plot you get is much smoother because you're now averaging over more days of temperature. So the curve is just, you know, less wiggly, it's now smoother. But on the flip side, the curve is now shifted further to the right because you're now averaging over a much larger window of temperatures. And by averaging over a larger window, this formula, this exponentially weighted average formula, it adapts more slowly when the temperature changes. Right? So there's just a bit more latency. And the reason for that is when beta is equal to 0 0.98, then it's giving a lot of weight to the previous value and a much smaller weight, just 0.02, to whatever you're seeing right now. So when the temperature changes, when temperature goes up or down, this exponentially weighted average just adapts more slowly when beta is so large. Now let's try another value. If you set beta to another extreme, let's say it is uh, 0 0.5, then this, by the formula we have on the right, 
this is something like averaging over just two days temperature. And we plot that, you get this yellow line. And by averaging only over two days temperature, you have a much, it's as if you're averaging over a much shorter window. So you're much more noisy, much more susceptible to outliers. But this adapts much more quickly uh, to have the temperature changes. So this formula is how you implement an exponentially weighted average. Again, it's called an exponentially weighted moving average in the statistics literature. And I'm going to call it exponentially weighted average for short. And by varying this um, parameter, or later we'll see it's actually a hyperparameter of your learning algorithm, you can get slightly different effects. And there will usually be some value in between that works best. That gives you the red curve, which you know maybe looks like a better average of the temperature than either the green or the yellow curve. You now know the basics of how to compute exponentially weighted averages. In the next video, let's gain a bit more intuition about what it's doing.